Hello and welcome. I'm Gohar Raza and you are watching Eureka. Chemistry or as it was known as alchemy was a fascination at one point of time for the human beings. However, the times changed and chemistry became a science in the true sense. And it gave birth to a large number of intellectuals who did outstanding work. Today we have a special guest who has done outstanding work in chemistry in our country. Welcome to Rajya Sabha channel. Welcome to Eureka. Thank you. Let's go back to memory lane. As a child, how do you remember your family? I'm not very well recognized at the childhood. I am born from a very poor family with father and mother are agriculturists. They used to support me, I used to support them in the agriculture. You worked with your hands? Yes. I am real farmer. Until my master... You still remember farming? Yes, I know everything. You can go back and even, to the farm. Even today, I like. That's why I am staying in a farmhouse. I like cultivation. You still do it? Yes, I still do it. Whenever I find what do you time, grow? Uh, we have some fruits, coconut trees, and uh, I advise them. I take care of them. I watch every day, and that's my habit. Every day you spend time on cultivating things in your farmhouse? Yes. Great. How much of it did you learn from your parents? You know, my parents never had the education at all. Uh, they used to work in the... Field. But they had experiential knowledge. That's why they were farmers. Yes. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the field of farming. Right. Yeah. They used to grow only the uh, paddy and other things to sustain our uh, livelihood. And I used to support them in every aspect. You know, schools are all in the, my own native place. They never used to have good infrastructure. There used to be a lot of... Problems. No infrastructure for science? Not science. Schools, even primary and secondary schools, we had tough time. And for my secondary education, I used to go every day at least 8 kilometers morning. Cycling? No, Bus, walking, walking. Walking. Eight yes. kilometers yeah, eight walking kilometers. every day as a yeah. child? Yes. In fact... What was the motivation? Why did you want to get educated? You could have been a farmer. My mother uh, wanted me to go to school. It's not it's father who encouraged father it's wanted mother who encouraged Mother, yes. My father wanted me to go for field. He always used to take me to the field. But my mother never... Uh, asked me to go to the field, but she used to tell me, you must go to the school. Although she was illiterate, she used to see people who were, uh, you know, at that time were going to the schools and she wanted an ambition that I should go to the school. I must learn something. Get educated and get the best of the education. Get the education. But I, d I don't know whether she had in his mind, but she had all in her mind to go to the school, that's all. I didn't get education. My husband didn't edu get yeah. education. My children should get educated and best of the Nobody age. in my family except myself. You were the first to I get educated? First. Yes. In your family? Yes. And was it hard for you to, Very hard. to study? Very because hard. there was nobody probably at home to help you with your studies. Very hard. See, I used to go to the school right from morning 9 o'clock until 5 o'clock. After I come back, I used to go to the field. Work there with yeah, father? work there with father. And uh, I used to get the fodder and whatever. Uh, we have buffaloes and uh, I used to take care of them. Before I go to the school, I used to go to the field and get some grass and then put it and then I used to, I used to go to the school. I never, I never used to open my books at all in the night time. By the time I come back from my field, I was so sleepy. <laughs> and tired. <laughs> tired. So when did you get time to study? Probably in the uh, high school. I used to go 
12 kilometers every day walking morning evening and then um, i used to support my family so you studied only in a school yeah at home at home you never studied until my until my pre university uh, uh, plus 2 you must have been very bright that the school education only during those periods yeah. and it was sufficient for you yeah. and you were always a good student yes my teacher used to support me by looking at me they used to tell me you must go you must read this one you must read this one they used to support me you remember they, some they, of the teachers yeah pashupati mesh is there sanna powers there so although they were small they used to come and tell my uh, father hey don't ask him to send it to the farming you will you don't support <laughs> let him study let him study you, they used to tell him then my father was a nice man very very nice man very good man but he didn't know what is world <laughs> he didn't know <laughs> he was simple very simple very simple like any other village yeah, yeah, yeah. very very simple very nice man he doesn't know bad things at all he didn't know bad things at all he was very extremely nice but he didn't know the value of education also at that time it was your teachers who encouraged teachers, you yeah. and you remember them encouraging you they shaped your life probably yeah in the high school of course yes my teachers. but who was the inspiration that you chose science as your subject no science only came after my uh, plus 2 uh, for pre university education uh, but if you didn't have good grounding in science in a school you couldn't have been a good scientist later on yeah people, so some teacher in a school must have encouraged you yes, to study science and school, maths in the high school there was one nagraj rao there was one subh rao they used to teach science and mathematics like anything without facilities yet yeah could generate interest in i science. never had the opportunity to go for tuition or extra uh, coaching never in my life you couldn't probably afford yeah no certainly not certainly not no 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 during our period going to um, tuition or mm, going to some institute after school hours was considered to be a very bad thing very bad thing yeah in fact that helped me a lot with our home and you know to study on my own in high school but uh, whatever i used to hear in the schools i used to remember those things and i used to write i used to be first in the school also in the pre university what happened they started two year puc at that time uh, they forced me to take uh, the in the medium of instruction is kannada because i belongs to karnataka they started on that time in in the regional language it was so so tough for me to read uh, physics chemistry biology in, in my regional language but i was the only one who passed out of 55 So you history. were a good student, and your life was definitely shaped by the teachers. Yeah. Because you didn't have the support at the family. I have to take a break. Don't go anywhere. The discussion continues. <music> Welcome to Yorika, Dr. Rangappa. You were educated. You were born in Mysore. Your family was here. Then you were. in masur at pre university level then you got admission in masur university you did your bsc then msc and then became a teacher here and now you are vice chancellor how is the journey like a student becoming a vice chancellor do you recollect your days of studentship yes yes you know after my puc see i am situated 50 kilometers from here a village from my so district only uh i studied for, you know at the uh, taluk head counter the pre university for bsc i came here to the mysore i studied bsc how hard it was for for your parents to support the yeah, education it was very tough university education yeah, to go to the college in mysore to have my own it was tough time because we had three buffaloes my mother said she is going to sell off I mean, she sold one buffalo and gave me money in the first year. Second year, she does the same thing. Third year, along with I used to get the merit scholarship, both uh, first, second, third, all the three years. Five hundred rupees at that time, you know, big money. And and, and <laughs> buffalo, oh, 
it used to be 750 or so. That was enough for me to take care of myself. 1,000, around 1,000, 1,200 rupees per whole year. Absolutely. I used to have a room in Mysore in a corner place where I used to have a little money for the room, sharing room. I used to pay around 25, 25 rupees or 30 rupees, I think. I used to pay rent. And I used to but make... But you were always committed to do science. You yeah, were always I, I was committed to read. To read, study and also excel. Yes. Excel as a student. Yeah, yes. What was, what was the kind of atmosphere that was there in your university and now it has changed over a period of time? How do you compare you between know, the two? BSc, I studied in one of the important colleges, uh, famous colleges in Sharda Vilas College. There, the science teachers were extremely fine. Ramesh Chandra. Today they are not? Uh, some of them are there, okay. some of them are passed away, but they all like me. Uh, because of that college, uh, you know, guidance and also the teaching pattern and also the kind of teachers I had, it, it was possible for me to have the further, uh, uh, you know, after BSc, my parents are, uh, and everybody wanted me to take some kind of job to support them, you know. Right. Yeah, but... Um, there was a pressure to now stop Stop study. and go to the, yeah, yeah so to kind of, you know, at that time, getting the engineering seat was tough. In fact, uh, I had uh, the seat for the, to study engineering, okay. you know, but uh, five years, the kind of amount that I was supposed to spend, uh, then I realized my family could not, definitely could not afford. Otherwise, you would have been an engineer. Engineer, yeah. I was right. in the queue to tell the you. The country honestly. would have lost a first rate uh, yeah, scientist but I would say who has contributed but, a lot but, to chemistry. But, no, no, but yeah, right. Uh, I, I would certainly realize that this is the best uh, opportunity that I have. You are yeah, happy being Yeah, there. I am extremely happy. An yeah. expert in the area In fact, I was in the queue to pay the fees, but uh, within half an hour, I realized five years and uh, the kind of amount that I need, I mean, it was not uh, for me to possible to afford. Then I, from there, I straight away went to one of the colleges. Came out of the line. Came out of the and line then and then joined the, the BSc. In Chemistry. Chemistry. But it was not uh, expensive, you know. So When I, did you decide that chemistry and that to biochemistry is going to be your future and that's it? After BSc, I applied for chemistry. I was interested in chemistry. I had a seat in all subjects, physics, biochemistry, everything. But I chose on chemistry because I, I had the, uh, you know, best marks in my BSc. I think... Uh, in chemistry? Yeah, I was the number one, I think. 72.3% uh, or 5% at that it time, it was... <laughs> yeah. Very high percentage. Therefore, uh, um, I had taken up MSc as my master's subject. To tell you honestly, after in MSc, after I joined the master's degree in MSc, uh, it was interesting. Uh, I was interested in organic chemistry, but somehow, in the permutation combination, I, they did not give me the organic chemistry as a specialized specialization. But rather, after MSc, I became an organic chemist. You know, first physical chemist, turned into physical okay. organic chemist, organic chemist, and bioorganic chemist, now medicinal chemist. I changed my field entirely uh, from the MSc basic to... But right from the beginning, you wanted to do biochemistry or you were happy with physical chemistry? No, I was, I'm, I'm, I was happy with the organic chemistry. But... Uh, soon after my um, master's, I joined for PhD. I got the fellowship because 400 rupees at that time, it was really excellent. Big money. Big money. <laughs> I used to support my family. I used to support my full family with that uh, 400 fellowship. 400 rupees. 400 rupees. A month. Yeah. But that was an excellent uh, money. That's From there, it started my good life. When did you start looking at the uh, difficult and complex problems? Um, of, of trying to get into biochemistry and then to drugs? After master's degree, after PhD, PhD, somehow I used to learn a lot. Then immediately I got the postdoctoral fellowship in Canada, University of Saskatchewan, Canada. There, it was tough for me to get into the organic chemistry. But I was trained well at that time and I did well. Since then, I opted all over the places I was in the United States. 
I was the best, I mean, uh, researcher in, in uh, Miami University, USA, full organic chemistry, published a lot of papers. And I... When you went abroad, uh -huh. uh, what was the feeling of your parents? Oh. They supported you, they were scared. That they, were never scared. Come, they were scared. You'll never come back. No, 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 they didn't they want. My see. mother didn't want to send me out at all. <laughs> she was crying whole day. <laughs> yeah, see, in 1980s, going abroad was a prestigious. Now Very it's prestigious. no more. Yes. In 1980, I was, I think I had been there in 1982. So it was a prestigious. The whole of my talk, I was the only one that probably must have, who has gone abroad at that time. Uh, my mother didn't know until I go and... Did your village come to see you when yeah. you were gone? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> oh, full, full, full. That was a different situation altogether. And they were proud of well, you. Yeah, very proud. And my mother, I mean, in fact, I was also in the beginning, uh, almost... Were you always clear that you will come back to India? Because you went to... My Canada mind was very clear. My mind was clear. Although I worked almost 10 years, uh, I was given the best of the best fellowships. Humboldt fellowships, uh, JSPS twice. And you have a long you, list of Name fellowships. anything. But I never had the mind to settle down there. The, my mind was to go back to India and see, let me let me do something in my country. And you wanted to come back to Mysore University. Yes, my University of Mysore. Yes. And then you became yeah uh, after one of the first great scientists recognized by the university by the national community of scientists and international yeah. community of scientists. I had developed now my when own. you look back. I'll come back to the the question that I've already asked you. When you look back. There were hardships at that time. Yes. Right. Now, today, the country is much more richer. Oh, yeah. The budgets are high. Do you think that you have been able to remove some of the hurdles for the students? Yes. See, at that time, when I wanted to get even one or two lakhs grant, it was so tough. Now, one crore, two crore is easy. If you have a brain, if you have a good, you know, merit, you will get into this. The you money is not money is a problem. not at all a problem. This is important. And you if you are good, the quality of this has gone down. Yes, it has gone down. There are not many people who would like to do good job, good work. There are not many people in the country who would like to do good job as far as science is concerned, and particularly chemistry. The discussion will continue. I have to take a break. On the other side, we will continue the discussion. Welcome back to Eureka. Vice Chancellor of one of the best universities in the country, that is Masur University. As a Vice Chancellor, what kind of hurdles, if I may ask you again, have you removed as far as doing good education, getting good education for a poor farmer or a student from poor family? Are their situations same? for that section of society, or it has changed? You know, this is my second uh, Vice Chancellorship in the University. Before I come here, I was the Vice Chancellor of Karnataka State Open University, which is in the university campus only. That experience made me, you know, what you have said is correct. I'm always for poor meritorious. Every community has meritorious students. Generation you can see now. The generation has changed. In every community you can see meritorious person. But that was always true. Yeah. But Our social structure had put filters for the poor. Now, what kind of filters you have been able to remove as far as your I always, I always look for the quality of a student and the merit of the student. I encourage outright. As a university, does Mysore University encourage poor students and how? You know, the poorest of the poor will be supported by the scholarship. The poorest of the poor is, I mean, if he is a meritorious, I am talking. If he is just poor, impossible. If he is poor and meritorious, I am sure he will be given all kinds of support, academic support, financial support. And you'll, I'll, my students will take care of the entire expenditure, you know. And then they will we'll place him 
in whatever uh, uh, whatever uh, stages you would like to have. I mean, certainly University of Mysore in that way. When you look back at your personal uh, scientific work, it's been recognized by the international community, national community of scientists. And you've done a lot of service to the nation. Yes. Because you have worked on drugs, yeah. which will provide solutions to a large number of problems, including cancer and Alzheimer and other things. What was the moment of Eureka in your life? When did you say, I've done it? It's a hard problem. I have cracked it. I have not done yet, but... I'm the moment of Eureka has not come yet? Not, not yet. Not yet. Not, yeah. You're waiting for it. Yes, but whatever is available, to my knowledge, I have done best job. See, nowadays, drug discovery program is very important. To find solution or... See, I'm an organic chemist. I always look for the organic molecules who can solve these therapeutic uh, problems. Maybe Alzheimer's disease or cancer or diabetes, whatever. But you come out with new molecules. Including in, malaria. Yeah, including malaria. You worked on In malaria. fact, my group has synthesized more than 4,000 molecules. And you have a large number of patents. I have five patents right now. And I have published papers, you name any important journal in the world, including PNS, Journal of Biological Chemistry. More than 300 chemistry. papers? 400 papers I have published. Right. 50 students have taken PhD with me. And large number of citations. Citations. 2,000. Yes. Uh, more, Maybe more. More. 3,000 citations. H index is 30. Did this give you satisfaction? Yes. Yes. One of the molecules, it's in under clinical trial for cervical cancer. I have a collaboration with several prestigious universities outside the country, like National University of Singapore, JNCSR, IASC, Pasteur Institute. You are expert I've, to yeah. committees in 10 big countries. Countries. And many, in fact, uh, developing countries. I've gone through uh, your but bio. But so far, striking so contribution. Strike, I want to see the striking contribution. That is yet to yeah, come. Yeah, that's yet to come. I'm confident that I will do a better job. You've got a very large number of awards uh, as recognition. As a scientist, in fact, the community has recognized you, as I said earlier. Which award do you uh, value most? See, I'm recognized in the Royal Society of Chemistry very well. I that is the pinnacle that you wanted to reach? That is the, the ultimate that you wanted to reach? No, still there are. You know, recently one of my papers published in Proceedings of National Academy of Sciences, PNAs, very prestigious uh, paper. There I have shown my one of the molecules used for antidepressant as well as anti-cancer. I am concentrating on that particular molecule to see whether it goes to the human trials. That's my ambition. Very good. I'm sure you will meet your ambition because you have been a very hard-working scientist. Would you like to sign off by giving a message to the younger generation? My message to younger generation is to support science, particularly basic science. They must, any country, you see the changes, that is because of science, to nothing else. You think economics, no, History. if the science is progressing, everything will be progressed. So if, you, if you have good science, economics, automatically it comes. Therefore, the scientific community is very important. Every younger generation must support science. If you want to talk about the progress of the nation, science. The progress of the nation depends on science. And the younger generation has to take up the challenge. Thank you very much for giving Thank so you. much of time. Very nice of you. Your it's, giving, yeah. it's been wonderful talking to you. Thank you. May I, on your behalf, uh, promise our viewers that you will be happy to answer any question if they have. Yes, certainly, yes. Certainly. If you have any question or query, please write to us at Eureka, rstv at gmail.com. We'll come back next week with another outstanding scientist. Keep watching Eureka. Eureka.